Welcome back to Open Line. I'm here with Dr. Manny Sethi, a local orthopedic trauma surgeon, talking about Healthy Tennessee, which is a, an outreach um, effort to reach people all across Tennessee and build the health of this state, one person at a time through free screenings, free health fairs. And in our first segment, you said we started this. It started back in 2011. And when you say we, we're not talking about health insurance companies or some big institution. This is really a grassroots effort. Absolutely. So about, um, I, so I grew up in Hillsborough, Tennessee, mm -hmm. a very small town, and uh, my parents were immigrants to this country, and, and so Tennessee really gave me everything that I have. Everything I am is because of the power of growing up in a small community, and so I'm, I'm very grateful. And uh, I left for a time to go to medical school mm -hmm. and to my residency, and when I came home, I was very eager to make a difference. And so... You know, I would see in the hospitals every day patients who were really obese and, and patients who, you know, their blood sugars were so high that they were, their kidneys were failing and we were, you know, and we were spending so much money on the back end of these problems. Right. So I spent my time in the beginning talking to policymakers and politicians about this issue. And I, I remember one time I was talking as someone's eyes kind of glazed over. <laughs> and I went that night and I was talking to my wife. And she knows me really well. We've been together since we were 16 years old. Oh, wow. And, uh, and I, I was so frustrated. And she just said to me, you're the kind of person that if you feel something powerfully, don't talk to somebody. Just go do it. Just go yeah. fix it. And out of that came Healthy Tennessee. So we decided to do active education and and really develop this nonprofit. In our first fair, we did in my hometown in Manchester. And uh, I, I, I very much remember it. She was there with me. We, we planned the whole thing together. And then out of that, out of this organic movement, it just things started started coming together. For example, United uh, Healthcare took an interest in us. And we're, we're very blessed to have them as a supporter. And then many other folks came, mm -hmm. uh, came along. And, but, the, but the real impetus in this was that my wife and I really wanted to give back and do something with our own hands. And I th and it, but again, I, I think the power of Healthy Tennessee and what it shows is number one is that we do need to get healthy. But the second thing is, is I, I don't believe that government and, and, and big organizations and entities are gonna change things. I believe that it's people on the ground boots on the ground, communities, and communities helping communities. And that's, that's what I think Healthy Tennessee has shown, and that's why I'm so proud of what we've done. Everyone has to get out there and get their hands a little bit dirty and say, okay, we've got a problem. How are we going to fix it? And absolutely. you are taking those steps through, this, through these health fairs. How many do you think you've done so far? Uh, I think we've done probably across Tennessee, that's a great question, 20 to 25 mm -hmm. over time, tw maybe 30 events over over the past few years, and that's just health fairs. We do educational events across the state. We've done two major symposiums, one with Belmont and one with University of Tennessee, where we had major businesses come, folks like Volkswagen, Nissan, Pilot Oil, uh, across Tennessee to talk about why it's so important to get your employees healthy, to mm. encourage building healthy communities. And so we have a, a lot of supporters that, you know, that, are, that are big businesses now that have come to the table. And so we, we've diversified what we do uh, to, to education as well of, of corporations, of universities, because I think this is an all hands on deck thing. I think we need to go person by person across Tennessee but I also think that we need to educate the policymakers. We need to educate leaders in business, uh, the private sector, about why building a healthier communities across Tennessee is so important. Because again, right now, for example, with diabetes, you can treat a patient with diabetes for, say, a dollar a day for their screening, for the things that they need, versus on the back end, Ten or a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars a day if they don't take care of oh, themselves. Wow. For example, obesity. If right now uh, with with a patient who's got a BMI, a body mass index of over 30, of over 40, that person is going to be prone to so many other problems mm -hmm. that research has shown that you're spending about five thousand dollars per patient who has a, a body mass index that is over 30, for example. So there are statistics that, are, that, that really, I think, are powerful that treating patients on the front end and really educating folks is so vital and so important. And again, I think doing it community by community, 
engaging communities, getting community leaders involved, getting your local representatives involved, getting business leaders involved, getting the local doctors involved, getting the local nurses involved. And that's the other thing I just want to say is that there are folks, for example, like Colleen Welch, who is uh, the former dean of uh, nursing at, at Vanderbilt, and she has been somebody who's been really influential in my thinking about nursing care mm -hmm. across Tennessee and how that's so important to what we do. Uh, nurses, you know, they, they are the, the, the folks that we really go to and yeah. they cannot be forgotten and they have been vital in, in, in our efforts across the state. They really, I think they're the patchwork of whether it's a doctor's office or a hospital. They really do make everything Absolutely. run. And they know the ins and outs of what's going on, and even in patient care. Absolutely. I know that my little, when my little guys had um, open heart surgery at eight months old, we wow. can't say enough of the nurses. They were by his bedside for 24 hours straight, never left. It was amazing. And yeah, yeah. our nurses are amazing. And, and when it comes to those health fairs, and whether it's people going to them or the doctors that, that have decided to say, yes, I will be there, you know, I think it's, it's easy when it comes to your health if the doctors decide to be in or out. It's easy to do something. It's also very easy not to do something. And so for people to step up and say, A, I want to make a change, or B, I want to be a part of that change, it's big. Yeah, it's very, it's very big. And one of the most rewarding things about these fairs um, is that you know in the beginning we uh, we all get together one of my favorite parts and we we pray together and we uh, we, we talk about what we want to get out of these fairs and it's so incredible just to be a part of that to, to feel that power of community and that 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 drive that people mm -hmm. want that they want to make a difference they they want to do some good and it may be for four hours on a Saturday morning but you know it, it's Better it's, than no hours yeah, on a Saturday morning. That's right. Morning. That's right. And you see people coming out uh, to to really uh, to really try to help their fellow Tennessean, and I think that's what Tennessee is all about. I'm going to put you on the spot here. Do you know sure. where a couple of the next fairs are? Or how do we get information sure. about that? So the next fair we're having is in East Knoxville uh, on October 29th. Uh, we're actually doing this in partnership with uh, Second Harvest Food Bank. Wonderful. So recently we've been partnering across the state. Uh, one of our partners who's been very uh, supportive is United. Um, Second Harvest Food Bank has been uh, very helpful. We were in rural Appalachia with them and uh, they have been, uh, been incredible. But our next fair is uh, October 29th and it's gonna be in Knoxville. Do you have anything planned for this area? Uh, we just had a fair here on Jefferson Street mm -hmm. uh, about three weeks ago. Uh, so we're gonna probably be coming back here in December. Oh good. Uh, maybe at my church at McKendry uh, Methodist uh, downtown where we had a fair last December. Good, okay, we have a call sure. to take a uh, reference Fuzz, I think. I just being told in my ear. I think that's correct. Reverend Fuzz, thank you for joining the show tonight. Hi, thank you. I, I, I heard your, your guest talking about that we've got to educate policymakers, congressmen, you know, you know legislators. But I, you know, I was involved in Healthy People 2000 back in '94, mm -hmm. and then again in Healthy People 2010 when that came around, and went to lots of meetings. And then the accident of being Healthy People 2020, which I turned down. I remember in third grade learning about an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And it sounds like that's what your guests are kind of saying, with a dollar a day compared to a hundred dollars a day. These new, you know, I can't understand why people don't get it yet, policymakers, legislators. The one question I want to put to you is this. We, when we come up with new policies and new programs, we've got to put funding behind them. You've got to have a team or an army of folk who go out and do this prevention, who help people who are on diabetes or manage their diabetes. you got to have social workers. What part of this does the conversation entail? Have we, are, we, are we at that place where we're willing to put the funding behind making these programs work? you got to have an army of volunteers all right, Reverend Fuzz, thank you for calling in. I know the audio was a little bit bad there, but um, I, I think we get the drift there. And it sounds like this is going on without government funding. This is boots on the Absolutely. ground. This is people who want to make a difference. It's, it's great. But is it frustrating too? Uh, well, Reverend Fuzz, thank you so much for uh, for for that uh, question. You know, Carrie, I think uh, that the Reverend is really onto something in terms of, you know, we really need to devote more resources to these sorts of efforts and what we're doing. But here, here's the reality of where we are uh, as a country right now. 
Uh, our political system is in gridlock. Mm -hmm. I'm a surgeon. I'm a doer. Uh, I don't, uh, you know, I, I'm, I can talk about things for a little while, but then I want to go do things. Right. And I just believe that in the future of our country and for healthcare in general, I just think that we have to really start to believe in our communities and our fellow man. And I think that educating our citizens, uh, I think that's what we, what we really haven't done yet. And I think through Healthy Tennessee, we spend very little on these health fairs because we're a nonprofit organization. And again, we, we depend on the local doctor coming out, the mm -hmm. local nurse coming out. Uh, the, the local social worker coming out, but the Reverend is, is correct that uh, instead of waiting and investing all of this money in sort of developing our, our ICU care, our intensive care unit care, maybe what we should be doing is focusing on the front end of that and developing programs uh, to coach uh, di diabetic patients on, on how to keep their sugars down, etc. There, you know, there's a a great program right now where a gentleman, a, a colleague of mine, has started a company where he actually coaches diabetic patients for different companies and has health coaches. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to do in Healthy Tennessee actually as well. But what they show is that there is remarkable control mm -hmm. over the blood sugars and patients do better when they have someone that they can call, when they have that one-to-one -one relationship. But I see no reason that we can't do that within our communities across Tennessee. But certainly I think, uh, Reverend, there is room uh, uh, in our, in our uh, state and federal programs to, to do that. And I think sometimes when, when we're not treating things on the front end, but then we fund things on the back and then we can say, well, look what we did and here Absolutely. are the statistics to show it. Because Absolutely. when you don't have the, the disease spiraling out of control, because you've done work on the front end, maybe you don't have the statistics to say, look at us, we're making a difference, That's right. you know? And so it just, it, it takes a different mindset, I yeah. think. It takes a wellness mindset. That's right. You know, let, let's, let's nip this in the butt before That's we right. get there, so. And, and I also think it's just, look, right now, if we are in the you know 40 or lower 30s in education and we have all of these problems with our infrastructure mm -hmm. we can fix those things if we're not spending so much money 38 percent of our budget 38 percent of wow. our state budget right now goes to health care and that's on spending on things that we could treat so easily with very small changes in our behavior and so I think that is on, on a federal level, on the state level, if we changed our thinking, I think we could, we could really have results. And I think that's what we're showing. Yeah. On that note, we're going to take a quick break. More to come with Dr. Manny. When we come back, we'd love to have your phone calls. If you call in, uh, we'll get you lined up during the break. Stay with us.